Hello, in this video I will explore the autosomal DNA results of a Natufian individual. Uh, he was male and had Y DNA, which was E1B. Starting with the phenotype, my Nashakot tool predicts him to have dark brown eyes at 64% likelihood, um, Greek shaped nose at 83% likelihood, and black hair at 91.47% likelihood. Um, what's interesting is he actually had one red hair variant in MC1R, but it was not enough. It was not enough to give him red hair. He still had black hair, guys. He just had this one variant. Uh, he had BEH1 blue eye haplotype 1, but no BEH2. Uh, obviously, no BEH3. If you don't have BEH2, you can't have BEH3. And uh, 23andMe would predict him to have brown or very, very dark eyes, basically. Uh, according to Snipper Free, he had intermediate skin tone, which is why I depicted him with an intermediate or kind of a brown skin tone hair. And according to my hair ID tool, he's actually predicted to have kinky hair at 57%, and um, which is why I depicted him with very curly, like tight curly hair. He did not have derived EDAR, so no mongoloid or no, no East Asian facial features. And this is why I depicted him in the picture previously, looking very caucasoid. His genotype in DRD2's Pro319 Pro variation was just very typical for non-Europeans. Uh, he had GG here, which equates to CC, and uh, Europeans tend to have AG or AA, which here equates to CT or TT. Everybody else outside of Europe has the CC or GG kind of a genotype. The implications of this genotype is that he had more dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, uh, a slightly increased risk of schizophrenia relative to like Europeans, uh, typical risk of schizophrenia for everybody else, and uh, was not a no-go learner. In this variation of DRD2, once again, nothing too surprising. This is a little bit of a, an atypical genotype for Europeans, and it's most typical for like East Asians or American Indians, but uh, Europeans also have uh, AG or CT here occasionally. He actually had two derived variants in OX2. OXTR, which is the closest we have to the sociopath gene. He was homozygous for the sociopath gene, so he had two sociopath alleles. Uh, pretty rare to see. Uh, he had a mixed or heterozygous genotype for the Valmet variation in Compt, so he was intermediate uh, between the Warrior with the IE and the Warrior with the IO. He did not have the European lactose persistence mutation and was most likely lactose intolerant. And here is the MC1R variant that he had. Now you could find this on your own in the file, which I will leave uh, the link to download in the description. Uh, but I'm just going to make it easier for you to drop the actual SNP so you don't have to search for it. And this is his result with Eurogenes K36. Now he's mostly scoring Arabian, Near Eastern, East Med. Um, but what's interesting is he's also scoring some African components, such as 18.6% North African and 14.8% Northeast African. Uh, this is his result with Gedrosia DNA, Iran, Neolithic K6. Now, uh, he's scoring 90.1% Natufian and additionally 6% Sub-Saharan, uh, which is interesting. And by the way, this was this this sample was labeled Kantam. On G25, it's labeled Kantam. I'm not sure why it's labeled as contaminated, because to me this seems like a pretty pure Natufian. But maybe the Sub-Saharan African influence is explained by that. Of course, I had to run the sample through the Gedrosia Ancient Eurasia K6 calculator. A slightly different calculator uh, compared to what I've shown you previously, but here he's also scoring 87% Natufian. And of course, uh, the 6% Sub-Saharan African, which is probably why this sam sample was labeled contaminated. Here is what he scores with the Eurogenes Hunter-Gatherer versus Farmer calculator. He's scoring mostly Middle Eastern Herder, uh, which I guess is some kind of a proxy for Natufians or something like that. He's scoring on top of that 24% Mediterranean farmer, which I've noticed peaks in uh, like Sardinians. And he's also scoring some East African pastoralist. Now, this is what he scores with Gedrosia K3. Very West Eurasian, very Caucasoid result. Uh, but of course, there is that 15% Sub-Saharan African ancestry, which is probably the reason why uh, he had such curly hair. This is his result with Eurogenes K13. Now, you can notice that on top of the East Med and a Red Sea component here, he's scoring 9% Northeast African. And I've heard somewhere that Natufians can be modeled as a mixture of uh, Zuzuana plus something Northeast African, like Zuzuana plus Mota or something like that. So maybe this is why. Uh, with the Oracle, he's closest to Saudi, Yemenites, Bedouins at pretty high distances. This is what he scores with Pan DNA LK10. Now, I already knew that the ENF component here was sus. Uh, it does not represent early Neolithic farmers from Anatolia. 
Uh, it certainly does not represent early Neolithic farmers from Europe. I think it represents something like Natufians, but it's just very scuffed in the way that the allele frequency table for this category was made, uh, which is why this Natufian is scoring this plus some Sub-Saharan African, which is nonsense, plus some Western European, which is also nonsense. And this is what he scores with the MDL PK11 Modern. Now you can see he's scoring mostly Basil category. I think Basil here is meant to represent something like Natufians, maybe like slightly more southern than Natufians because he's scoring Basil plus Neolithic, which I know is representing Anatolians. Uh, on top of that, he's also getting a little bit of African, 5% African, so he had some African admixture on top of that. With the Oracle, he's basically a mixture of Natufian and Neolithic European farmers. So he had some of this Neolithic European farmer uh, sh drift relative to other Natufian, not drift, but like shift uh, relative to other Natufians, which is maybe maybe why this sample was labeled contaminated. This I just don't know why it's labeled contaminated. It's so scary when you see a sample. I just downloaded the sample and I saw, oh my God, it's contaminated. I just wasted all this time, but it's not contaminated. I lo it looks fine to me. Uh, this is what he scores with the MDL pk 23 b Now this is kind of a nonsense result. I don't really want to dwell on it. Uh, because here he's scoring 17% Caucasus, uh, he's scoring 24% North African, it's just all over the place. Here is his result with MDLP World, now here you can see he's scoring mostly Middle East, no Caucasus Persia, no Indian, but he's also scoring a little bit of South and West European, which I think is meant to represent some kind of a farmer admixture in Europe, and he's scoring 7% Sub-Saharan. Uh, with the Oracle he's getting modeled primarily as a mixture of Yemenite Jew plus Mozabite, at a very high distance of 12. Uh, you see a distance of 12, you already know this is not a very good fit. And this is his result with the Ethio Helix K10 plus Palestinian Oracle. I mean, not Oracle, calculator. I just wanted to run him through this uh, calculator to see what kind of an African admixture he had. Uh, because it's interesting to me, because these Natufians had some African admixture, and apparently this admixture is mostly of the omotic nature. And this is the sample's official G25. It's quite different from other Natufians, like it has a high distance to other Natufians, but it's closest to modern day Men Me Yemenites from Mahra, Bedouins, uh, Tunisians, uh, basically like Middle Eastern folks, but also at a very high distance. It's not particularly close to anybody. So what guys, do you think the sample was contaminated? Uh, do you think this reconstruction by Ancestral Whispers was accurate or if this individual had uh, curly hair like my hair ID tool predicted? Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, uh, suggestions, everything else in the comments, and uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.